Hi, I've been getting a lot of questions about how to put together a basic sewing kit for someone who's been learning how to sew in the Montessori classroom. So I thought I'd show you my favorite supp supplies and materials to put together your own sewing kit. And then in a day or two, we can put up some more videos of how to do some of the sewing activities and how to use some of the supplies. So first of all, you're gonna need scissors. And my favorite scissors to use with a student, a beginner, is Fiskars brand scissors. Like this Fiskars right here. And they're, they're very sharp, but they're not pointy at the tip. So I, I bought these in bulk on Amazon, but I know you can find them at Joann's and other crafting stores. Um, they're even easy to resharpen if they get dull over time. If you cut paper with them, they get dull. Uh, but Fiskars are easy to resharpen. So you're gonna need scissors. You also need a pin pin cushion and pins and a needle. So this is my little pin cushion that's tiny, like a made from a bottle cap and it's flat on the bottom. The ones you can buy in the store are uh, often look like a tomato, which is fine, or some other little shape. Sometimes they're like a little cushion that goes on a bracelet on your wrist and that's okay too. Um, it really doesn't matter what uh, it's made out of. Some are hard and some are soft or whatever but um, it's really important to keep your needles and your pins in your pin cushion, keep them organized so they don't get lost while you're, uh, while you're working. Um, you only need a few, a few um, pins for a small uh, kit. I've got four pins. These are the ones with the balls on top. They come in different colors, different sizes. Um, some have little nail heads and some are balls. I like the balls for a child to use. Um, four or five in your little pin cushion is fine. And then there's two different kinds of needles that I like to use for a beginner sewer. A chenille needle or a cruel needle. There's lots of different kinds of needles out there and it can get a little overwhelming, but the two best kinds for a child or a beginner to do by themselves is a cruel or a chenille needle. And they're easy to find on, again, online, either at joannes.com or Amazon for sure. And the reason we use those two is because they're sharp on the point, but also they have a very large eye. The hole is called the eye, and, and it's really help, helpful to have a large eye for the child or the beginner sewer to thread it independently without you sitting there with them, doing it for them every time, once they learn how. Also, you're gonna need thread. The two most common kinds of thread at the fabric store or whatever are called Co Coates and Clark thread, or Sulky or Gudeman's thread. These two, doesn't really matter the brand. They're really just cotton wrapped polyester and they come on a little spool like that. Uh, I like to use a color for, for a student who's really new to it, um, a color that's contrasting to the fabric that they're using. So if you use white thread and white fabric, it's gonna be hard to see your work. So pink on white or black on red or something like that to contrast so you can see the thread is a good starter. Um, what else? A needle threader is the next most important thing in a basic sewing kit. And this is the kind I use in the classroom. I'm not, it's not easy to find these ones in the store. I did see something similar on, on joannes.com that was called a tapestry needle threader. And it, it was like this, but sort of different. But this one I found on Amazon as well. So it has these two little hooks that get inserted into the needle to help you thread the needle. And I'll show you when, when we do a, a little tutorial how you can put thread on there and then pull it through easily. The students in our classroom are learning how to use a needle threader so they can thread it all by themselves. And so those are the main ingredients for your basic sewing kit. Other than fabric and something to sew, that's the basic sewing kit. I'm gonna th show you a few more things that you're, want, you're gonna wanna add right away, including fabric. Cotton or cotton blend with polyester is the best thing to sew with. Don't cut up an old pillowcase or an old sheet because it's a really tight weave and it's really hard to get your needle through that really tight woven fabric. But a regular quilting fabric, something from the discount aisle that has a print that your, your student likes, your child likes is fine. This one's just really plain and I have I've left all of my embroidery hoops at school to share with stu with all the children who don't have any. So mine's really big. I got a really big hoop. 
They come in different sizes. This is an embroidery hoop and it's two pieces. And it has this little tightener at the top to hold your fabric in place while you sew a design or you sew some buttons or some sparkly bits, whatever you're gonna sew on there. And you're gonna wanna cut your fabric just a little bit larger than your hoop. Let's see if I can show it. If you cut it too small, it it's hard for it to be successful. It slides around and stuff. So if you have a small hoop, you just make the fabric a square a little bit larger than that. And again, I'll show you a video on how to use your fabric. But an embroidery hoop is helpful to hold your fabric really steady, tight like a trampoline, while you're sewing something on your fabric. <clears throat> Also in the classroom, you use a lot of felt to sew. Felt doesn't ravel like, um, like fabric does, so the edges never get fuzzy or pull apart. And it comes in lots and lots of different colors. This particular kind of um, uh, felt is really stiff, but that's okay. And some, some felt is a little more floppy and, and sort of flexible. This one, my little Alex has decided to make into it a body sort of shape, and he's gonna put some eyeballs on it and has two layers so he can put some stuffing in when he sews around. So it's easy to for a child to cut with their fisk or scissors a shape and then make some creature that they wanna make or a stuffy. A couple more things are, um, it's good to have buttons. So you can cut buttons off an old shirt or an old dress or something. It's easy to buy them in a little baggie from the fabric store in lots of different colors and shapes and sizes. These, all these buttons are in a whole box that belonged to my grandmother. She just, handed, she just kept buttons all the time, just cutting them off of old dresses, never throwing them away. And so they make good eyeballs. They make good decorations for all kinds of things. Um, as I said, Alex is going to make his little stuffy with um, these white buttons first, and then with these black ones on top to make funny little eyes for his little creature. That should be really fun. So get creative with what you do with your buttons. Um, we also in the classroom use a lot of beads as decorations. It's fun to just sew beads straight onto your fabric, but they also make good buttons. They make good jewelry. They make good Christmas tree lights on whatever it is that you're designing on your little embroidery. And then of course I keep saying embroidery. Um, embroidery floss is really important to use. You can try all kinds of little, they come in 100,000 different colors and they come like this on a little skein but I find it's the most successful for a child to do it by themselves if we wrap it onto something else, okay? So I took this and wrapped it around this little doll peg. You can also use a piece of cardboard or something else, it's a pencil, it could work. Um, but if you pull it straight out of this or your child pulls it straight out of this, it's gonna be a tangled little bird's nest of a mess. So it's really good to have it in their little sewing kit to make a colorful design, that's why we, you wouldn't want to use embroidery floss to make something really colorful, not just to sew a button on, although it works to sew a button on too. Um, so that's the basic sewing kit, those things. Really, scissors, needle, pins, pin cushion, thread, fabric. That gets you doing all kinds of things, but these other things are gonna make it even more fun and more exciting to embellish and design something fancy. Um, and so stay tuned for some more videos on how to use these amazing tools and how to use the needle threader and how to be safe, how to tie a knot, and we'll get sewing together. So collect your materials and I'll get back to you in a few days for some more fun sewing projects.